Indeed Up Close and Personal, genealogist, best-selling author, and professor, Tony Burris. Tony will share with us the importance of knowing ourselves. Welcome to The Greatness in You. I'm Will Horton. Today, our topic is knowing yourself. Joining me today to talk about the importance of knowing yourself is the great genealogist, professor, and best-selling author, Tony Burris. Welcome to The Greatness in You, Tony. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Tell me about the important work you've done in genealogy over the last 20 years. Well, I really enjoy genealogy. It's become my passion in life, and my goal is to teach everybody else how to trace their family history and find the greatness in their ancestors. So I taught genealogy at Chicago State University for 15 years. I wrote a book called Black Roots, A Beginner's Guide to Tracing the African American Family Tree. Now I've been lecturing all across the country, teaching others how to trace their family history and learn about their great ancestors, as well as work with clients and helping them to find out about their ancestors. And you've indeed given greatness to your life. Tell us the importance of knowing our family history. Well, unless you know who you are and who your ancestors are, you're kind of like operating in a vacuum. So you need to know more than just who your parents are. And sometimes we need to really find out who our parents really are but also our grandparents, our great-grandparents, and we'll find out that we had many ancestors that we can be very, very proud of if we go and do our research and find out who our ancestors are. Unfortunately, many of our ancestors are left out of the history books even though they contributed to history. And once we learn those great contributions, then we can operate as if, you know, we really didn't come from anywhere. And I think that a lot of people operate today uh, not knowing they came from that greatness and so they think that you know they just started with themselves so I think it's very very important for people to understand where they came from they can be proud of their ancestors and it, it builds a legacy within their family and gives them a foundation to move on into the future I had a cousin once that learned about my grandfather who was her great-grandfather and she wanted to go to law school and when she found out that her great-grandfather was a lawyer I helped her learn about her grandfather, and she said she wanted to step into his shoes and pick up where he left off. That's powerful. Yes, and, and you have some powerful information about your great-grandfather. He was involved with the Pullman's Union. Yes, exactly. Tell me about that. Exactly. Again, discovery. I didn't know anything about my great-grandfather when I was growing up. When I started tracing my family history, my grandfather was deceased. My grandmother said, this is who your grandfather was, and this is who your great-grandfather was. She had a black tin box, and inside the tin box was the Articles of Incorporation from the Colored Men's Railway Mercantile League, founded in 1901. My great-grandfather was the president of the organization, and he organized Pullman Porters 24 years before A. Philip Randolph organized the Brotherhood of Sleeping Car Porters. I was just completely blown away and found out how great my great-grandfather was, I never even knew his name, never even saw his picture, knew nothing about him until I started tracing my family history. Your great-grandfather was great? Absolutely. And you became great. You, you did something very significant. You discovered a mistake, a 40-year mistake by the National Archives. Tell me about that significant accomplishment. When I was writing my book, Black Roots, A Beginner's Guide to Tracing the African-American Family Tree, I had to put in there, I had to write about how to research the census. And this was before everything came on the internet. And at that time, the census records, you had to look at the census records on microfilm. The index to the census records was based on the sound of the name, because people spell their names differently. My name is Burroughs. I found over 20 different ways to spell Burroughs. So in the old days, you know, since names were spelled differently, they had an index based on the sound of the name. So therefore, if the names were spelled differently, you could still find it. Well, the instructions that the National Archives was publishing did not work for my name, Burroughs. So I went on a mission to try to find out why. When I did, I found out that the instructions that the National Archives had been publishing for 40 years were wrong. I found the original instructions. I sent the information to the National Archives, to the Archivist of the United States. I also published the correct instructions. And based on what I found, the National Archives agreed with my findings, and they made a determination to change their instructions, rewrite the instructions, and retrain their staff 
based on my research and the example they used for the new instructions was the name Burroughs. So I felt very, very proud of that. Uh, so it's, you know, what I consider one of my greatest accomplishments. You also contributed to a book, 100 Things We Should All Know What to Do. Sure. Okay. Uh, tell me some of those things. I know you didn't write the whole book, but tell right. me just from your experience, some things I should know. Well, one of the, the my chapter was on genealogy. Mm -hmm. Like Debbie Fields wrote a chapter on how to bake cookies, and Larry King wrote a chapter on how to interview someone. Mm -hmm. And my chapter was how to trace your family tree because I want everybody to know that they need to research their family history. So I had tips on there on interviewing your parents, looking at records from your family cemetery, going to uh, pick up birth certificates and death certificates and marriage records, and how to get started in tracing your family tree. So it was in the expert's guide to 100 things that everyone should know how to do because the author said that one of the 100 things everybody needs to know how to do is to trace their family history. And, and it's that important. And these are very simple uh, pr uh, steps. Simple steps that everybody can do that really doesn't cost you a large amount of money. We have to take a short break. We'll be right back. Discover the personal powers that unlock the genius and the greatness in you. Will Horton, author of the Wisdom for Greatness series, has written a breakthrough book, The 30 Power Principles, 30 life-changing principles that will help to give birth to your greatness. The 30 Power Principles can help you awaken and bring forth infinite possibilities for happiness, health, success, and greatness. Buy it at Amazon.com, BarnesandNoble.com, or call Wisdom Books at 773-445-2400 for free shipping. The 52 Principles for Successful Living, Keys to Success and Victorious Living by Will Horton will elevate your mind, lift your spirit, and take you to the pinnacle of success. They provide the key to success. They will connect you to the power of your higher self. Buy it at Amazon.com, BarnesandNoble.com, or call Wisdom Books Incorporated at 773-445-2400 for free shipping. Wisdom Keys, Great Proverbs and Sayings by Will Horton is a four book collection of timeless proverbs and sayings that provide sage advice and guidance for successful living. They are a fountain of knowledge that will inspire, motivate, and empower you to achieve greatness. Book one, Ability to Extraordinary. Book two, Failure to Knowledge. Book three, Lack to Purpose. Book four, Quarrel to You. Will Horton's Proverbs and Sayings are rules of conduct for successful living. Buy the four book set at Amazon.com, BarnesandNoble.com, or call Wisdom Books at 773-445-2400. Shipping is free. Make your child head of the class Head of the Class Early Childhood Development Center, 1900 East 87th Street, Chicago. Committed to excellence in education. Call 773-721-7500. Welcome back. We're talking about knowing yourself with the great Tony Burroughs. Knowing yourself is the beginning and very foundation for success. Number one, learn who you are. Your self-image shapes you. Number two, discover your reason for being. You were born to become great. Number three, believe that you are destined for greatness. Each day, work to become the person that you desire to be. Let's hear what some people on the street are saying about today's hot topic. To not second guess myself, not doubt myself, but know who I am as a person. So success to me means finding out who I am as a person. 
and we're looking for other people to um, to value us and to place value on us. And I, and I think that that can be really dangerous. I think it's more important to feel like uh, you're, that you yourself feel that you have succeeded rather than having gained the acceptance of other people. Sometimes no matter how hard you try, no matter how, how much good uh, you do in the world, you're gonna find that there, people are not necessarily gonna give you that recognition. Hi, my name is Levine Harris. I'm from Chicago, Illinois, and you have greatness in you. We have to take a short break. We'll be right back. Wisdom Keys for Greatness, Rules of Success for Teens, Book and Workbook by Will Horton will get you ready for success. Rules of Success for Teens prepares you for future success and greatness. The rule of conduct for tomorrow's success is to prepare for it today. Be ready to board the success train when it stops at your station in life. Buy them at Amazon.com, BarnesandNoble.com, or call Wisdom Books at 773-445-2400 for free shipping. My name is Dominique, and I want to be a psychiatric doctor. A professional football player. A marine biologist. Be a lawyer. I want to be a veterinarian. A teacher. To be a doctor. I want to be a songwriter. Don't just be ordinary. I want you to become extraordinary. Not only that you have to have goals, but you have to work towards them. I learned that the first step to success is to believe in myself and always keep going on with your dreams and to never let go of them. To choose your friends correctly. Because like if you don't, you can go down the wrong path. For success camp information, call 773-445-2400. Martin Luther King Jr. is a hero, an inspirational book for children from early childhood through middle and late childhood. Martin Luther King Jr. is a hero will help parents and children better plan their life's journey, aim, and destination. The book will help young children give birth to their dreams. Buy it at Amazon.com, BarnesandNoble.com, or call Wisdom Books at 773-445-2400. As always, shipping is free. When you're on this team, you learn to never give up. Even if you're down, third string quarterback, clock ticking, hostile environment, exhausted, you can never lose hope. There are over 13 million people in the Horn of Africa affected by famine, war, and drought that are counting on us for help. More people affected than the population of New York City and Los Angeles combined. And we can't give up. Please go to this site and forward the facts about this crisis to everyone you know. Do more than donate. Forward the facts. Welcome back. Let's learn wisdom for a healthy you. Hello, my name is Dr. Carla Watson and I'm a board certified physical medicine and rehabilitation physician. I want to talk to you about knowing your risk factors for heart attack and stroke. Heart attack and stroke are the leading disease today that are causing morbidity and mortality in our country. And it's important for you to know your risk factors. So talk to your family about what runs in your family and what potential risk you might have for having the same diseases with the goal of having a healthier you. We have to take a short break. When we come back, we're going to get up close and personal with the great Tony Burris. Stay with us. Here we go, we're gonna, we're gonna make some juice. Looks good. You ready to try it? Challenge your kids to be active and eat healthy. It's okay. Okay! And she took another sip, you saw it? Search We Can for ideas on how to get healthy together. Believe in yourself. 
know that there is a world outside the world that you feel trapped in. Never, ever, ever listen to people tell you what you cannot do. Greatness is not a destination, it's an awakening. For the best in limousine service, ride with a butler. Call Butler Limousine, 708-758-5466. The ABCs of Success, A to Z Rules and Action Steps for Success by Will Horton will help give rise to victorious living. They will help you condition your mind for success, keep a positive attitude, get in the success zone, achieve success and victory. Buy it at Amazon.com, BarnesandNoble.com, or call Wisdom Books Incorporated at 773-445-2400 for free shipping. Will Horton's Power Quotes is a six-volume collection of power quotes that will get you in the power zone. Volume 1, Power for Dreams. Volume 2, Power for Success. Volume 3, Power for Hopes. Volume 4, Power for Winning. Volume 5, Power for Greatness. Volume 6, Power for Life. Future success awaits those who make the best use of the present, says Horton. Will Horton's Power Quotes, the six-volume set, is available at Amazon.com, BarnesandNoble.com, or call Wisdom Books at 773-445-2400 for free shipping. Make your child head of the class. Head of the Class Early Childhood Development Center, 1900 East 87th Street, Chicago. Committed to excellence in education. Call 773-721-7500. Welcome back. I have the great Tony Burroughs with me. Tony, you were raised in Chicago to a blue collar family. Yes. Tell me, how did your family influence you? Well, my mother always taught me to be the best at whatever you do. It doesn't matter what you do, but just be the best at what you do. And my dad was like the hardest working person I'd ever knew. And uh, my dad, uh, it, it was difficult to get to talk with my dad because my dad had gone to law school and if you came to him with an argument you had to know what you were talking about <laughs> you know so it was a great training ground what were your dreams growing up well my first dream was to be a professional baseball player and uh, that kind of got thrown out the window because uh, when I went to high school we didn't have a baseball team which really was a blessing in disguise because I ran track and when we ran track, we had to run outside no matter what the temperature was or what was going on. If it was raining, snowing, it was sleet, whatever, we ran outside every day. And from that, I learned hard work and that nothing would stop me in anything I wanted to do. So those are some great lessons that I learned from high school as well as from my parents. There's a legacy of greatness associated with your life if you go back. Tell me about some of that great legacy. Well, my grandfather, when I grew up, we lived in the same building with my grandparents. We lived on the second floor. My grandparents lived on the first floor. My grandfather was a lawyer, and I knew he had clients that came by the house. He had an office downtown. What I didn't know until after my grandfather died and I started tracing my family history was that my grandfather wasn't just any old lawyer. My grandfather dropped out of high school to take care of his mother, got a job in a law firm as an office messenger, worked his way up through the law firm, and became a lawyer, and then became president of the Cook County Bar Association in 1928. Mm -hmm. I didn't know any of this until I started researching my family history. I learned that his mother, my great-grandmother, went to Spelman College in 1885 when Spelman was only four years old. So I mean, Many, many, many stories that I learned just from tracing my family history, none of which was told to me as I was coming up. We talked early about some of the great successes of your great-grandfather, but there are some other great successes in your family history. Share with us some of those successes. Sure. I found out I had an ancestor that was a Buffalo soldier mm -hmm. that fought out west, you know, in the 1880s. Mm -hmm. Never knew about him until I started tracing my family history. This is the 150th anniversary of the Civil War. I found I had an ancestor that served in the Civil War. 
with the Massachusetts 55th Infantry. I found out I had an ancestor that fought in the Battle of Lake Erie, and this is the 200th anniversary of the Battle of Lake Erie. I found out that I had an ancestor that taught in a one-room schoolhouse in West Virginia. I mean, I just found out my family history was extremely rich, and it was denied to me because I didn't seek out my ancestors and trace my family history. But this legacy of greatness had to influence you. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Um, Every time I find out about a new ancestor and what they did, it gives me a lot of pride and it gives me a foundation as well as I go back and I tell my family and help give them a foundation and pride in their ancestors and gives them things to strive for. Someone said to me once that I don't want to embarrass my ancestors, so I try to do a good job at everything that I do. And I kind of like that philosophy. What has shaped Tony Burns? What has shaped your character? Well, I guess my parents. My parents worked hard. My parents had morals. They had values. You know, I grew up at a time where we sat down together and we ate dinner together as a family every night and we talked about current events. We talked about history. We talked about different things. And so I think that has really helped me try to be a person that has strong values, can converse with other people, and try to be the best of whatever you could be. Tony Burris has much more to share with us when we come back and we'll find out what life lessons he's learned. Welcome to the greatness in you. You are a unique individual. You are here on the earth with a purpose and a destiny. Believe that you can win and set your goals that way and the path will find itself. I think we all come here with certain talents. We all come here with certain affinities and certain abilities. We just have to basically show up and, and, and give it the best that we have when those opportunities present themselves. The challenge is not, is not easy, but it's being persistent and being determined to, to fight against the obstacles. There's a proverb which says, don't worry about walking slowly, worry about not stopping. I've learned to never ever give up. Even if you fail, you just pick yourself up and, and keep going. When one has that, then there are no obstacles. There are pebbles that you move out of the way and go on to the next step. Then it's easy for you to develop a vision, and then once you succeed, you do something small to benefit the community, which is charity. I've enjoyed my life, and I've been lucky that every step has helped me grow a little further in a different direction, become more of who I am. Really tap it into the essence of who we are as human beings. Um, we're all, in the end, one. Live in faith knowing that the desires of your heart, if they are for the good of yourself and mankind, if you see it, if you feel it, if you smell it, if you sense it, if you hear it in your being, it will be. Welcome back. We're talking about knowing yourself with the great genealogist and professor Tony Burris. What are some life lessons you've learned, Tony? Well, I guess the main thing is to have confidence in yourself and to believe that you can do whatever it is that you want to do. All right. So if you think it, then you can do it. So have that confidence. The second thing is, is to find your passion. Find out what you enjoy, what you love, and just enjoy life and enjoy what you're doing. The third thing is, is that you need to try to be an expert and be the very best at whatever it is that you're doing. You need to read every book about whatever it is that you're doing. You need to find out who the experts are. You need to talk to the experts. You need to do everything in your power to be the very best that you can be. 
And then the next thing is, is that you need to solve problems. Don't run away from problems, but solve problems. I found out that as I go through life, when I solve problems, no matter how difficult they are, I usually end up learning something, reducing stress, and, 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 and just taking another step forward. Uh, it just amazes me how many people have problems and they just try to avoid those problems and then they just have those problems that just linger all throughout their life or all throughout their profession. So I've just said that whenever I have a problem, I'm going to do whatever it takes to solve that problem. And again, every time I solve a problem, I either learn something, I reduce stress, or I progress in my profession. Problems really strengthens us. Absolutely. I mean, many of us, we're so worried about problems or adversities or failure that we never achieve success. Absolutely, absolutely. And it's kind of like I love problems because problems stimulate your brain, they stimulate your mind, and once you accomplish and solve that problem, you feel so good that you solve that particular problem. And, and, and just learning the new things. When I do genealogy and I can't find my ancestors, every time I solve that problem and find out where they were and what they did, it tells me something new that I hadn't learned before and it breaks an assumption that I had about my ancestors. Tony, before you leave, you have to break this news for me. You're starting something that's very important to our community. It's going to be a big event. Tell me about this big event. We're starting the Center for Black Genealogy. This will be a center to take black genealogy to a new level. We're going to have a library, a museum, and archives where people can come in and learn about their family history. We'll be having classes, workshops, seminars, doing things digitally, doing things on hand. We're going to be doing all kinds of research projects. We're going to have some studios set up where people can come in and, and interview their relatives and walk out with CD-ROMs of their interviews. We have projects that we're going to do all over the globe. Some projects in Africa, some projects in the Caribbean, some projects in South America, in Canada, everywhere where people of African descent live. We're going to take black genealogy to the next level. I tell people that African American genealogy just started with Alex Haley about 30 years ago. We're still in our infancy stages, but there's a lot of things that we want to do that we need to do. So we're going to be discovering new records. We're going to be indexing records. We're going to be digitizing records. We're going to have seminars. We're going to have workshops. We're going to have fellowships. And we're really going to entrench black genealogy into the community because we found that when young people learn about their ancestors, they have a newfound pride. We've also found that when elders start to do genealogy, it gives them lifelong activities that stimulate their brain and give them a worthwhile hobby to do for the rest of their life. We're going to have to have you back and talk about your center. Love to. Great advice. And thanks for sharing. And thank you for joining us on The Greatness in You. I look forward to meeting you one day and hearing about your journey to success and greatness. Remember, you have greatness in you. This has been a W. Wharton production.